on, people? Welcome to another edition of Gen Sports Corner back at you for August 28th, 2024. Hey, you know what time it is. I'm your host, Jen. Introduce yourself again, as always. Ryan from Ryan Sports Guest. You already know. Absolutely. We're going, we're going to get into this thing, man. Um, you know, you see the hat, you see the gears. Eagles time, man. I'll, I'll get into the Raiders at another point, but there's really not a whole lot to talk about with us um, outside of Brock Bowers, our, our new tight end. And uh, Devontae Adams and the quarterback situation with Aiden uh, McConnell and whatnot. It's, it's pretty much Aiden McConnell and Gar- Gardner Minshew for the Raiders. So um, I'll go over them at, an, at another time. But the Eagles are the topic of the league right now. So the the roster cut day was uh, yesterday at 4 o'clock Eastern time. And the Eagles made uh, a lot of moves that we thought that they were going to make. But they also made some surprise moves. So let's go ahead and we're going to run through this real quick, starting with the quarterback position. And the three quarterbacks that made the cut were obviously John Hurts, Kenny Pickett, and then Tanner McKee. So what do you think about the battle between Kenny Pickett and Tanner McKee for the number two job and the fact that um, Pickett may be the backup in week one? I think um, it's very. it was very obvious in the preseason games that Pickett is not the, the backup. I mean, I think they gave him probably gave him that because they gave up a third round pick for him, um, possibly. But I just I don't see how he is the backup because Tanner McKee, when he came in, you saw him throwing precise, accurate passes. I just I don't understand this because if Jalen just say he does go down, not that we want that, but it's just to me it doesn't make sense because Tanner McKee would just light not even just better he was light years above Kenny Pickett in my opinion I agree I I don't really understand I think that they went for the experience over the youth but yeah I I care about okay you've been mediocre for three or four years who cares about the fact that you've had experience at being mediocre for two for three or four years I want the best person as a backup Mm -hmm. yeah you absolutely do, and you have to look at that. And it's just Kenny Pickett. I just he hasn't been that good. Why would you want to go with him as your backup? Like if Jalen goes down and they really put him as the backup, you're in trouble because he's not he's not good. No. So um, the only uh, thing that I would like to see is them giving Tanner McKee time to, I guess, get more reps. Maybe, you know, whatever. Um, maybe you guys in the comments can let us know what you think, but I, I don't I don't see the reasoning whether you want to give McKee more time to to sh- round in, into form. But whatever form he's in now is still better than Kenny Pickett. So, I mean, it's we'll, we'll see. And then uh, so next one, we're going to move on to the running back position. So they kept three running backs here. Sometimes they keep four, but I think they're so confident that they only kept three. So Saquon being the obvious one, Kenny Gainwell. Um, this is his fourth year, third or fourth year now. And um, we know he is. He's he's Darren Sproles light. And then Will Shipley, the uh, fifth round draft pick from this year. And that's the one that really intrigues me the most. So here's the breakdown that I'm seeing from phillyvoice.com. And they say, as long as he stays healthy, Barkley will get the most touches among this group of backs. But uh, Gainwell and Shipley will have roles. So Shipley, I want to see him not just in the passing game, uh, sometime on third down, but um, in the uh, special teams game. So, um, he 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 was a he was a spark plug at, at Clemson. I remember looking up some of his highlights, and he really is a versatile Swiss Army knife. So that's why I really like him. What do you think about him? He's he definitely is a fifth round steal in my opinion. I think due obviously due to his size is maybe why he, he you know dipped down a little bit, but he. You put on the tape, man. You're you can see how like shifty he is, and you know, like we were talking about, he's he reminds me of Darren Sproles. Not that he will be, but he he's impressive. He's a very impressive player. He very much is, man. So I mean, I mean, they're they're pretty solid there. There wasn't too much of a surprise there. What is interesting is starting with the wide receiver position. So you have AJ Brown, you have Swole Batman, you have Skinny Batman, and Devontae Smith. You have Jahan Dotson, who they just traded for from the commanders because they're brain dead. And then you have Burton Covey, who special teams, man, he he really turned it up last year because 
many, many people were questioning whether he should be even even be on the squad because he would two years ago he would catch the ball and, and immediately get hit get his head damn near knocked off and now it's like he he started to adjust to the speed of the game near the end of the 2023 season and 2024 he was one of the uh better punt returners or I mean, he might have even been top 10 in the league last year as a as a special teams returner so um that made a lot of sense to me and then the last guy here is johnny wilson so that's the wild card what do, what do you think about johnny man johnny 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 He's um he's definitely good for those jump balls. He's um he's still a work in progress, but I I think he's I think he might turn out to be a player. Um, we'll see, but I am pretty intrigued by Jahan Dotson. Just the fact he's our well, he's gonna probably be our third receiver. I mean, I just find that to be amazing. But yeah, Johnny is um he's a, he's an interesting player, and he, I think he's gonna be very good. Absolutely. And um, I don't know if somebody was just throwing this out there or not, but he either is or should be looking at tape of Harold Carmichael because he has that build. He has the speed. He has the athleticism. He has the size. He's 6'6". And I think that is a perfect segue to go into the tight end position where they only kept two tight ends this year. That's pretty much unheard of in football. So you have obviously Dallas Goddard and then Grant Calcaterra. And I, I maybe they're thinking – is that Johnny Wilson can flex into the uh, number two tight end spot because one of their backups, he's on injured reserve right now. They traded for him last year. I can't, he might've came from the Broncos. I don't remember, but um, Albert, um, uh, his last name is just so difficult. We're just going to call him. Okay. Albert is not okay. (laughs) Albert (laughs) is is actually headed to the injured reserve. So, (laughs) Um, I think that uh, that probably would might have been their their backup tight end, um, but I think Johnny Wilson is going to be uh, flexed into that two spot. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, there's not really much to say about tight end. You know what you're going to get with Dallas Goddard. You you know what you're going to get out of Grant Calcaterra. It's really just staying on the field. He's very very talented. He's a he's a very good pass catcher, solid in blocking, but he's just been injured. So it's going to be on him to stay healthy and really. Um, prove them right for giving him a roster spot. Exactly. And it's, it's just like with da- Dallas Goddard, I kind of feel the same. Like he's – he needs to stay healthy too. Like Dallas Goddard, like he's he, – like there's times where I wonder, are you going to ever stay healthy? But, I mean, he has, but there – you know, how do you feel about his injury history? I think his injuries are more of a result of – trying to do too much. Even if you look at the shoulder, it was, it was, it was a shoulder injury last year. Yeah. Shoulder. So that was him trying to fight for like a couple extra yards while he was going out of balance where he really didn't need to. So like those, to me, those are preventable, avoidable injuries. Um, Mm -hmm. Other than that, you don't really see him get hurt. So I think it's a matter of you trying to do too much and you're fighting for five extra yards that, are probably inconsequential in the grand scheme of things, even though in the moment you want to try to get every yard you can um, at the risk of being off the field for two, three, five weeks. So I think it's, it's more of a mental decision with some guys other, other than that, I think he's built for tough. And I think this is a common misconception that people have. And we were talking about this off camera a little bit. People, they look at injury and they look at things on the surface level, but they don't ever uh, apply context they don't they don't ever bring in context where you talk about these things. They think about um they'll pick one thing and focus on it with like laser mm-hmm. focus, but they'll 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 essentially get focused on three trees but lose sight of the entire forest. Yeah. But yet yeah. they they know what they're talking about. Like, you know, it's it's um I won't curse on here. I try I'm trying to cut back the cursing, but uh, one of my favorite rappers, copyright, shout out to you. He said, um a line, um, never before have I met such a strange kind, so full of confidence, yet so full of crap at the same time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like mm-hmm. people, yeah. they they don't think things through, but yet they come in with so much conviction as if they know what they're talking about, and they want to argue with you. And I, I yeah. have multiple um, things that I argue with people about boxing, baseball, football, but it's like, yo, Dallas Goddard, as long as he's not trying to do too much, he's going to be one of the top tight ends in the league, especially in this Agreed. offense. Oh, yeah. Um, especially behind, you know, with this line, you know, moving on. 
So they only kept nine offensive linemen. And that's because they have a lot of guys that can swing to multiple spots. So obviously you have the mainstays, Jordan Malata at left tackle, going from left tackle to right tackle. You have Jordan Malata, Landon Dickerson at, at tackle, uh, Landon Dickerson at left guard, Cam Jurgens replacing the great Jason Kelsey, who just signed a $100 million deal with his brother with Amazon for their podcast, which is crazy. That's wild. And then at right guard, you have Makai Becton beating out uh, Tyler Steen, the rookie from last year. I think, think Tyler Steen was from Notre Dame. So he's a very, very high-level guard at Notre Dame, guard slash tackle. And Tyler Steen, he probably could have been a starter this year, but Makai Becton, he really came in and challenged him. And Tyler Steen, as good as he is, he had a couple of rough spots he needed to clean up, but he still could have been a starter. Huh. It, it, there's, there's really no drop-off between him and Sua Opeta, who left already. But you brought in Makai Becton, a former first-round pick. I think he was either the third or fourth overall pick for the Jets like four or five years ago. And, um, yo, he's still young. He's in shape. And now you got a guy for cheap that – if he if he's able to turn it around, he might be able to get back to an all pro level for another two three years, man. Like you know, you, you got to steal there. Yeah, um, absolutely. And then at right tackle, the um, the Iron Man Lane Johnson, and then for the backups, you have obviously Trevor Keegan. Um, that was the rookie from this year. Not, not obviously, but to obviously Tyler Steen at at either one of the guard spots, preferably right guard. And then you have Trevor Keegan, who you drafted this year. He dropped down so far in the draft that he had no business being there. Trevor Keegan, he is really, really good. 6'6", six, six, uh, not, not uh, that's Johnny Wilson. Um, he he is, you talk about people with a strong base, and I talk about Terrence Crawford in boxing with this a lot. Uh, Trevor Keegan has such a strong base, he just is able to drive through people. And I think that's why they were so, so excited about him. So in 2023... I forgot what school he played for, but it said Keegan Michigan. did not. You said Michigan? Yeah, Michigan. Yeah, he didn't allow a sack last year, and he had a career-high pass blocking grade of 80.7 as per, I guess, P PFF for college football players. And he played eight games without allowing a single quarterback pressure. Think about that. Eight games without even allowing a pressure. Not They're not even in the area code. That's insane. And, and you know Michigan, they're not um, – Appalachian State, they're playing really, really good schools, and he's just dominating. Can't speak for the rest of his teammates, but he is doing his damn thing, so very excited about him. And then um, our last guy, um, tackle out from the um, – I think he played for the the Bengals for, the, for a little time. Uh, Fred Johnson, offensive tackle. So that's the – I think that's the last offensive lineman we have down here. And then uh, Darian Kinner, excuse me. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Darian Kinner. So you you have a lot, you have guys that can switch back and forth to multiple positions. So they have so much flexibility. And when you're going to the University of Jeff Stoutland and you get your PhD from there, you just know you know what you what you're doing. Okay. There's a reason why these guys come in, whether they're good or whether they're reclamation projects, and they all send, tend to um, get on track because he yeah. he's like the Jim Johnson of offensive line coaches it's ridiculous especially look at jordan mylotta what was he like a six seven brown pick play rugby he turned him into one of the best offensive linemen like in the league like right right exactly crazy. exactly so um i think what they're going to have to do is um and i'm reading this article and this is my thing i think that center is more important than guard and one one of the concerns they have here is um, the Eagles don't have a backup center unless you count Landon Dickerson. And here's why: if I were the Eagles, I would not even bat an eye at moving Landon Dickerson uh, inside to center and just putting Trevor Keegan or uh, or Tyler Steen at left guard. Who who the hell cares is, who's between Cam Jurgens and um, and Jordan Malata? Okay, because Center is that's the linchpin of your line, and people see people. It's like they forget that Landon Dickerson, excuse me, he was one of the best centers in the country with Alabama. Yeah. He just happened to be able to play guard because he's just that good. So it's like it 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 makes me think like the people writing this article. I'm not going to say who wrote the article. I'm gonna be respectful. It's like did they ever play football? 
you, do you know how simple it is to move one slot over? And I only played at the P Lee, Lee level, but I played offensive guard. I was a, I was a little dude. I weighed sixty five pounds, and I played on a hundred pound team because I was too old to play on a sixty five pound team. And but I had long arms, which is paramount in the trenches. Anybody that knows football knows that. So even though I was super skinny, I was always super strong. So I would get my hands on on kids that were like 30, 40, 50 pounds bigger than me. And I would just be able to hold them in place with my long forearms. And then I had super strength for my side. So I could just, I could maneuver people without holding them and grabbing a whole bunch of jersey. So when you have a guy like Landon Dickerson, who is super strong and he's really, really good at playing on the inside and he has a pedigree as a top center, why would you even ask that question? And why would you even be concerned? Even even if you thought he was good enough to play center, why would you care if you moved him from guard to center? Guard is, is kind of inconsequential. Like you move people to guard if they um, don't have quick feet, okay? You, you just need to be able to take up space at guard. Do you want a better guard than average if possible? Sure. But that's where you can have average at. You want to be good at center and the tackles. Right in the middle and then on the edges, that's where you want to be strong at. So, um, again, I, I don't I don't think it's an issue. I wouldn't sign a backup center who's a dud just because you want to keep Landon Dickerson at guard. Like, get the hell out of here. Um, you yeah. have flexibility there. Absolutely. So, uh, just, just a little rant on how um, I think that some people in the media – they either haven't played sports or they don't know what the fuck they're talking about or they play sports, but they they still lack understanding and a, and a depth of knowledge to to see the obvious. And they, mm. they create questions and issues where they don't need to be any. Like maybe it's just a slow news day. Maybe you just don't know what the hell you're talking about. But that's just my opinion on it. Yeah, 100 percent. All right, so let's go ahead and flip over to defense. Um, let, let us know what you think in the comments about the offense, who they kept, um, who you would have um, cut, and who you would have kept. Um, An Anaya Smith, one of their rookies, he didn't make it. He didn't have a great training camp, and um, we'll see what happens. But um, if they're trying to keep him on the practice squad, he ain't going to make it through waivers, in my opinion. So we'll see what happens there. Um, and then, so defensively, we look at the trenches. So let's go ahead and look at the edge defenders, and we'll look at um, – the new addition, Bryce Huff from the Jets. You obviously have Josh Sweat at the other end position. And then you have Randy Graham, Noah Smith, Jalex Hunt from the draft. I think he was fifth round pick. And then Patrick Johnson from a few years ago. He's he's um they're trying to see if they can get something out of him because um athleticism wise, he is A1, but can he put it all together? That's what we're gonna find out. What do you think about with their uh final cut set defensive end? Um, I thought in, in all made sense. There wasn't any surprises to me at all. I felt like it, you know, Bryce Huff and everyone, all the there was no really big surprises. I like um I think Jalex Hunt I think Hunt is gonna be a bit of a surprise if people don't already know about him. Right, right, right. Yeah, that's gonna be a good one. Um so you know, I'm reading here, you know, small small school player, and I knew that. Um and uh, he had a lot of pressure, 78 pressures, 14 hits, 14 sacks since 2022. Like he and that guy has as explosive of a first step as anybody off the edge. It's just about can he develop the the hand skills to win at the next level? Because that's what it always comes down to. If you don't have the hand yeah. skills, don't matter how fast you are. Yeah, you're not going to beat anybody if you don't have that. No. So, you know, on the edge, they're they're pretty much set, in my opinion. And Bryce Huff. The questions were, is he going to be able to hold up? And he's he's looked good. He's looked good. Okay, so he's – we'll see if it translates to regular season. But on the interior, I mean, now it's the, the time where you need the young guys from one and two years ago and Jordan Davis and Jalen Carter to um, show you who they are. Like Jalen Carter, we, we already know who he's a monster. And he's been showing that this year he's going into his next form, almost like Dragon Ball Z. And then Jordan Davis – I think Jordan Davis is an elite player where he's not elite is keeping his weight in check. That's going to be the question for him moving forward. But if he's able to do that, he has a chance to be just as good as Jalen Carter, in my opinion. I'm talking about totally guys. Agree. Yeah. And then, and then uh, man, uh, that, a guy that you mentioned, uh, Milton Williams, he's looked really, really good in camp. He had some really good reps, I think, against uh, a couple of dudes. It might have been including Landon Dickerson as well. So 
he's looked really sharp. And then you have uh, Marlon, um, I can't pr pronounce his last name, not going to mess that up, uh, Moro Ojomo and then Thomas Booker. So those those are your your depth defensive your defensive tackles for your depth there. So I, I like the moves. I, I think there's not much change there. And then yeah. uh, moving on to linebacker, that's where it gets interesting, linebacker and cornerbacks, because now you actually have uh, – a reason to be excited at linebacker. So you, you picked up Devin White in the offseason, um, who he's a seek and destroy type of linebacker who, in my opinion, opinion, just needed a little bit of guidance. He had some bad habits from LSU um, with regards to over pursuing, because as soon as you took out, um, I can't remember his name, oh, Vita Vea in the middle. So Vita Vea, as soon as he got hurt or he wasn't in the lineup, he started trying to make plays and get out of his assignments. And that's what really came back to bite him in the butt. He was just over pursuing, uh, flying past gaps and letting running backs cut back. Like he's, he's fast enough to get to the spot. I just think he was trying to do too much. And then some of his bad habits uh, came back into play because of that. Um, so you have Devin White, you have Zach Bond, and then the Kobe Dean, Jeremiah Trotter Jr., who's the really, really Fantastic. good. Really, yeah. really good. And then uh Ben uh Van Sumeren. So um he was probably like a special team squad player. But uh, at linebacker, I, I will li really like what they did. And um tell me what you think. I think N'Kobe Dean and Jeremiah, I think uh N'Kobe Dean and uh, that's that's going to be interesting. I have to really sit back and see who the starters are going to be because there's it's so much speculation and they're being oh hum on who's going to be the starter here. Well, who do you think is going to be the starter out of Devin White? The two starters out of Devin White, Zach Bond, and Kobe Dean, and then Jeremiah Trotter Jr. Two out of I think I think Devin White's going to win the starting job. Um, I think opposite him will probably I think Jeremiah Trotter Jr. and Nicobe Dean maybe I think Jeremiah Trotter Jr. might work his way in. And I think um Nicobe Dean's gonna Nicobe Dean's probably gonna start. But I think Jeremiah Trotter Jr. is gonna get some playing time based off of how he's been playing. I agree. And if I were the Eagles, if you have in um enough talent at the linebacker core it could allow you to come out in a base three, four or four, three, you know, because Vic Fangio runs a hybrid and you can be able to sit in a base defense with three or four linebackers and still be confident in covering tight ends and slot receivers because these guys are so athletic. Having a guy like Devin White or Kobe Dean, they can keep up with a slot receiver for about two seconds and give, give your defensive line enough time to be able to get some pressure. So, you, so you, and then you can still have the size to be able to stop the run or you can come out in these uh, big nickel formations. And that's that's where we're going to get into going into the cornerback and safety position. Um, looking at the cornerback position, you obviously have big play Slate coming back. He's still playing at a high level. Isaiah Rogers coming back from the suspension. He's a former Colt. I'm telling you, I, I mentioned him before. He is telling you he's that dude. He's that dude. He didn't play at a high level against some of the best. And he didn't been uh he didn't have that clink clink lockdown defense on a lot of dudes, man. Um, they sleeping. And then obviously the rookies, you have Quinion Mitchell, who's been a phenom, and we called that out. Cooper DeGene, he back healthy. He's he's another guy. I mean, whether it's Quinion in a slot or Cooper DeGene in a slot, and Cooper can even move to safety. I mean, you got some versatility there now. And then Keely Ringo. Um, I think he finally fixed the issue of the stiffness in his hips, and now he's looking more and more like the guy that was shutting people down at Alabama or Georgia. Yeah, Georgia maybe. Um, he looks more like that guy. I mean, he's he. Ah, who was it? Um, what, who did have in camp? Was it the the Ravens or the Jets? I don't remember who it was. The Patriots. Patriots. Okay, he was running step for step with somebody, and he got his hand. He high pointed the ball and all that stuff, man. Like he's. He he can turn his hips. He on to me. That's that's got to be Darius Slay's project right there. He has to be under Darius Slay and Darius Slay. Um, he said he wanted to help the rookies. That's that's your project right there because he's going to be your clone. And then yeah. you have Eli Ricks, who again he's so talented. Um, a great if 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 Eli Ricks one two three four six. If Eli Ricks is your sixth cornerback. You are in a hell of a great spot. Hell yeah, bro. Um. So, what do you think about the cornerbacks? 
I think they're very deep. Um, I think it's the deepest we've seen them since the um Dawkins, Shepherd, like I mean, those days in my opinion. Because you just got so much versatility. You got CJ, you got your Ringo, you got I mean, like Avante Maddox is even I think he's pretty I mean, when he stays healthy, and he, I think he's really good corner. And then, you know, we already know what Mitchell is, Cooper DeGene. I, I mean, as you're right about Isaiah Rogers, too. He's, he, bro, he, he's going to be for real. He is. He is, man. Uh, Josh Job got cut, though. Um, So, look, th- th- look, Eli Ricks, like, like I said, he's so good. Josh Job. He's a he's a pretty solid special teamer. So like they have a oh. lot of depth there. They went from having a dearth of talent to having an abundance of riches there. Yeah, it's crazy. And then if you go to the safety position, here's the thing: you have Chauncey Garner Johnson. He came back. Good to have a leader back there because we sorely missed him last year. Not just on the field, but mentality wise, he brings that dog mentality where he's just like, "Yo, I'm a junkyard dog. Like every play, I'm here, man." I'm here. Come see me. Like you need guys like that. And then re Blankenship at the other safety spot. Um, Avante Maddox back at safety, and he doubles as a slot corner. And it's going to be a lot, be- a much better situation for him because now they can use him strategically. So now they can manage the the amount of wear and tear he's getting. And when he's on the field, he's he's phenomenal. When he's on the field and healthy, he's phenomenal. So if you can mitigate that wear and tear. Now you're going to be able to get the best out of him. 100%. And, and then you have uh, Tristan McCollum, I would imagine a special teams guy. And then the wild card who made the team, James Bradbury, made the team at safety. Your thoughts? And um, keep, and, um, and listen, you're going to have a lot of people that are emotionally charged now that we're bringing up James Bradbury. So, you know, tread carefully. I, I mean, if I have mixed feelings on it. I feel like we're so it's such a good spot, but I I like James Bradbury. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm yeah. not sure how he's gonna pan out the safety position, but I'm in a spot of okay, we'll see. Yeah, I mean, people tend to forget that he was a top level cornerback two years ago as a cover two corner. He was playing in the Super yeah. Bowl, and really, we would be thinking about him very differently if they didn't call that ticky tack pass interference on him. Exactly. Right. So, I mean, he was never a fast guy, even with the Giants. But I think word to the wise, to the people listening, and I'll use boxing as an analogy. The reason why boxers are so afraid to lose that zero on their record is because they know as soon as they get that first loss that everybody's going to jump ship and bail and say, oh, he was always trash. We're done with him. He was never good. I See, I knew he was garbage. Look look what happened with Devin Haney and Ryan Garcia, okay? He lost to Ryan Garcia, and everybody's like, oh, Devin Haney, see, I told you he was trash all the time. First off, some people have never put on no gloves, never been in the ring. Like, you need to shut the fuck up and, and tuck your dick back between your legs and go somewhere else, man. <laughs> yeah. I'm not, and I get passionate about that because I'm, I'm a martial artist, man. Um, But even more so as an athlete, even talking about football, these people are like you have one bad player, one bad season, and they're just like, oh, well, he he's just is downhill from now. Like people don't realize whether as with anything in life, whether it's your whether it's the stock market or um whether it's um football or whether it's martial arts, things even if things are trending up. Even even if things are trending in one direction, they rarely go in a straight line. It's usually a progression up and down. Life is never as simple as you would like it to be. So even with somebody like James Bradbury, okay, he had a very bad year last year. But what does that have to do with how well he's going to play at safety? You don't need to be fast to be at safety. And even now, he has good speed for a safety. So if he can translate his cornerback skills, especially as a cover two corner, to playing safety, why would you not keep him? If he already knows how to play a cover two zone, is it really going to be that different to cover a third of the field as a safety or cover the middle third of the field if he's playing cover three? Not really. So, like, people have to take their emotions out of it. A lot of times people mm-hmm. are like, he's getting paid a lot of money. If he's not playing as an all pro, he sucks. Like, y'all need to cut that shit out, man. And that's the reason why athletes... They don't say nothing in the media, but y'all need to cut that shit out, man, because here's the thing. 
don't judge lest you be judged. If you have one bad week of work, does that mean your dumb ass should be fired because you forgot to take the packages out at two o'clock and you took them out at three? So that means you're going to do, do the same thing the next week and the next week into perpetuity? Of course not. So don't be a jackass and apply the same logic to uh, you know professional sports. Now, that being said, you have to don't overestimate things and don't underestimate things. Just see it for what he is. James Bradbury, he can't play on the outside anymore, but he can for sure be a good safety. So we'll see how he does. OK, we'll see if he's able to rotate in and have some good plays. And if he's not, then you have your answer. But regardless, you still have so much talent here that it's really irrelevant whether he does. It's a no risk high reward scenario. So why not do it? You're paying him anyway. You're going to have to pay him regardless. So why not try to see if you can get him to play at a high level at safety? And even if he doesn't, you're going to pay him to sit on the, you're going to pay him anyway, whether he sits on the bench in a uniform for the Eagles, or whether he's on the street or whether he's somewhere else. Okay. So why wouldn't you try to play to his strengths and put him at safety? So that's the way I see that. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I mean, like you said, he still is a very talented player. I mean, you know, I mean, they're paying – I think – they're. I forget his salary cap, but they're paying him a lot of money. Oh, but, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, so I I do agree. He, he bring it – when you say James Bradbury is, like, pretty much on the – I guess the bottom of the list, I mean, I think you're in a pretty good spot. Exactly. Exactly. And then last but not least, you know, the special teamers, because they are players. They do count. Um, maybe some people wouldn't agree, but they they are they are people. So we have the the great Jake Elliott, who um uh, man, he's he's up there with David Akers for me, man. I'm not gonna lie. Um <laughs> he's up there with David Akers, so obviously he made the team. You have Braden Mann, so you actually have um, I think what would be your long-term punter now. They signed him last year. I can't remember if they drafted him or if they signed him as an undrafted free agent, but he's back again, and he solidified his spot, man. He he's, yeah. it looks like he may be here to stay. He had a pretty solid year last year from what I can remember. Yeah. Um. So you have him there, and then obviously you have uh, Rick – oh, yeah, Rick Lovato as your long snapper, and boom, there's your squad. There's your 53-man squad, people. Let, let us know what you, you think, Eagles fans. Um, I think it's a very, very good squad. And then not just because they're they're good at all the key positions, but even if guys get hurt or maybe they have to take some time off, they have guys, their backups are starters. That's why I'm so excited about this team. Yeah, 100%. It's a pretty stacked lineup this year, and we're going to be uh, you know, feeling pretty good about our birds this year, I think. I hope. I'm not trying to get my hopes yeah. up too much, but it's hard not to. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So um, I think that's pretty much for the, it for this episode. Um, I'll be doing another episode for the Raiders uh, probably sometime later this week. I'm, I'm getting more time now, so I'll, I'll do that. Um, it's, it's not too, too much to talk about, but I am interested to see how Rock Bowers does. Like That dude, man, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, look him up. Monster. Look him up out of Georgia. That dude's a freaking monster. He 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 reminds me of Jeremy Shockey when he came into the league. Like He's going to – he can either go out – as a no name or he could revolutionize the position. So we'll see. Yeah. Um, yeah, but that's it for this episode. Uh, let us know what you, you think in the comments. And um, also I'll be dropping a video for the Phillies um, probably on the weekend. I'm I'm going to eventually go into the Sabre metrics and, and explain what I think about the pitching rotation and the lineup going to the, uh, the playoff stretch. But we're going to talk about this current win streak that they seem to be trying to start again after that big slump that they had. Um, but there, there are some great things they're doing, but there are still some things that concern me that aren't necessarily personnel based. They're more of a philosophy issue, in my opinion. So I'll get into that as well. But, um, yo, that's it. I'm happy to see y'all again. Um, it's a great day and I hope you all enjoy the rest of y'all week, man. I'm your host, Jen. That's my co-host, Ryan. And we're going to catch y'all next time. Deuces. Go birds. Go birds, man. <laughs>